Plagued with Problems, Packard Bell Roundy Part 2. How's that sound? Anyway, in Part 1 we kind of did an analysis and uh, open capacitor in the power supply, no audio, no signal getting through, presumably something in IF number 1, ICP not working, which is the degaussing on this set. The remote unit didn't work. And that uh, that's just an initial analysis. So this thing has a lot of issues we need to work out. Usually these don't. Usually sets of this era, if the CRT and the flyback, I mean, that's the good thing about this. The CRT and the flyback are good, which are basically the heart of the thing. So, oh, and the high voltage was not regulating, or it wasn't regulating enough, so I had to turn the brightness, raster brightness way up to kind of clamp down on the high voltage so it didn't eat the flyback. This morning, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by just going through and testing the, the tubes in the front end, the audio output through the IF. Out of all the tube testers that I have, I kind of always default back to this one, which is the TC162. I don't know why. Okay, 6AQ5, 6C14, 6C1 and 4, and we want to take out number 7. And let's see, grid leakage. That's interesting. It's a little bit damp out here, and the grid leakage is pretty sensitive. Usually, what I'll do is I'll drop this down a volt to kind of get a good so yeah this one's weak see audio output I wouldn't see if we got any shorts no shorts just a little on the weak side but that won't cause the audio not to work so 6JH6, I skipped all the way back to the first audio tube. Um, I mean the first IF tube, I'm sorry. 6JH6, 6D14, 6D14. Definitely not an issue there, and we had a dead IF. At least I was, I was um, feeding in on. I was coupling over the top of the second IF and getting some data through. Data. Listen to me. Data. Analog data. Second IF, uh, 6GM6. This is, oh, look at that. As soon as I plug it in, the shorts light comes on. Six, let me make sure I got that right. 6GM6. Six 6GM6. Six 6GM6, 6D14, 6D1, <laughs> in the first video I was feeding an IF signal into a can coupled over the top of this which would effectively radiate the IF frequency through the glass onto the plate and yeah so 
This thing is like, see the short light right there? That does that even show up on the camera? It's lit. So six is shorted. Six is shorted and one is shorted. The emissions are just for the hell of it. Let me turn the filament airplane off and let's see if it's it's like shorted to the point where it appears that it is it, filaments make no difference it's just shorted well wonder if we can clear that short out That cleared the short out. Just a little piece of hair got in there and shorted something together. There it is, fixed. I think it has issues. It doesn't have the hard short now, but it still has issues. So I'm going to mark that one. Okay, I marked that one with red paint. I'll have to dig out another one of these and come back to this. It probably just had a little whisker or something in it. You know, once you clear them out, it might remain for a little bit. Just want to sort of... Seems happy now. 6EJ7. Okay, take out 3 and 6. 6EJ7. And 6D23. 6D2. Now this socket is seen better days. Good. The third IF. Okay, I found the one tube in the set that's been replaced. 6GH8. 6GH8. 6D2 and D9. 6D. Reset this. 2. And the, yeah, like I said, this socket is really worn out, needs to be changed again. Okay, yeah, this socket is completely twacked. 62. Amazingly, a 6GH8 that seems to test pretty strong. Let's go down to 5 volts on the filament. Yeah, happy 6GH8. 6AH6, 6D14. Yeah, this one's happy. Usually if they have shorts, you just see it right away like the first one. No emission, just 
pegged grid leakage just shorted. Here's another one that's been replaced, 6BN8. This one was under a shield, so I didn't see it initially. This looks like it's got two diodes and a triode in it, it looks like. So on this one we got D1, D6, and E3. So that's D1. Say D1, D6, and E3. Did I do that right? Stand by six. Okay, let's try that again. D1, D6, and E8. This is the load. This is the pin. So D1, D6, and E8. That one's good. So the only one that was screwed up was the second IF tube was shorted. We're going to go through and we're going to kind of quick test these capacitors. The uh, musical selection will be uh, Incredible Bongo Band Apache. Some people will no doubt recognize this song. It's been used in commercials from for just about everything from cars to prostate medication so here we go we'll start with this one and I'll do a direct connection okay so that's uh, full ESR let's see so the smaller the capacitance the less bass that'll get through so if it's just like a 2 microfarad, basically it'll just be like a tweeter, is all we'll hear. And if the ESR is low, it's like there'll be a big resistor in series with the audio. So we'll do this one next. Uh, those all sound good. Uh, here's the open one. So in this case, you can hear all that's making it through is what's making it through the diode because this capacitor is open. That's why we have the clip leads. If you watched part one, you'd understand. Okay, so all of those seem good. Let's uh, test a few of these small ones up here. Okay, this one is kind of dead. Hear how quiet that is? I'm going to bypass it. So what's the value on this one? Five microfarads. It's kind of a dead my five microfarads. Okay, you can hear that one's a small value, but the ESR is decent. So this one here is roached. I have no idea what this is for. Yeah, it's hard to tell. It might seems like it's a little high ESR. Let's see what else have we got here. Uh, I think that's about it. That one is questionable. This uses a different capacitor for the ICP degaussing. See that oil filled? I got my connected to it. That's different than what's on the schematic. Um, that is good. It's a low microfarad. It's probably like three to five microfarad, 
But that is good. I don't know why the ICP is not working. We might have to investigate. Two more things that were not working on this. And I did order that vacuum bulb off of eBay. So that's on the way. Um, let's see, we tested the electrolytics. They were all okay except the one in the cardboard can down there that's part of the doubler circuit. The tent control did not work. And yeah, granted, we haven't fired it back up to make, see if the tuner and the rest of what the rest of the front end and stuff does after I cleared the shorts on that too. But yeah, the tent control did not work. So I'm looking at the tent circuit here. Hue is what they call it. So we have a 50K that looks like it connects to this area here. And, um, you know, it would be highly preferable if something like that capacitor was shorted or that diode was shorted rather than the actual pot being open. These pots are all double pots and they're all custom. So it would be highly preferable not to have to. And I don't know what kind of solution I'd come up with because, I don't know, maybe have one sticking out of the back of the set. Because the set really aesthetically is pleasing. You don't want to botch it with some, you know, crappy pot that wasn't designed for the set. And this is what I mean. Hue and color are the same pot. And color was working. So let's really hope that this is not bad. Okay, there's the diode right there. That little thing that looks like a germanium transistor. So I imagine this is probably the hue control wire here. So let me follow that. That comes down and it goes through a hole here. Here, here, here. Is that it right there? Boy, is that crusty. That connects right to that tube pin. So right now, I believe I'm measuring from this point to ground. I'm measuring the ohms, which would be as the same as this point to ground. And I'm measuring 8.9 ohms, which sure seems like that is shorted, but how? Where? And it's measuring on the other side of the diode, it's measuring 25 ohms, which would be that coil. So measuring it up here, it's 25 ohms. So the short is definitely on this line. So is it this capacitor? C126, I wonder where that is. Okay, that capacitor is this disk capacitor right here. And not that a disk capacitor can't short, but I've never seen one short. So it's most likely going to be up there in the panel where it's shorted. And I sure hope it's not the pot. I keep saying that. That wire for the tent control comes out of this bundle right here. And I'm starting to think it might be time to just pull the chassis out. At least get this out of here. They give you a little bypass jumper thingy here. I guess this is when it doesn't have the remote. You can still use it, you know, or by, use this little plug to bypass the remote. That's, that's kind of courteous. So we'll bypass the remote. I'm trying to figure out where the short is. Wait, did the short go away? 
So I unplugged the remote and the short went away. Or maybe it didn't go away, but it, it, I'm gonna try turning. It's at 10K now. I'm gonna turn the tent control. So something in here is shorted, causing the tent not to work. Did this have a hue adjustment on it? It sure does. So I guess the hue in this thing is overriding the control of the hue on the front panel. All right, I sprayed the pots for whatever that's worth. About all you can do is just spray the whole back of the thing because you can't get in there. I um, wonder how this works. Okay, here are the pots. Boy, what a clever. So there is a manual override right here on the outside to, uh, let's see, what adjustments did we have here? We had volume and channel. So I have a feeling this one, I mean volume and hue, so I have a feeling this one's going to be hue because it's maxed all the way out. Here's the way this works. You got two electromagnets, right? Get these out of here so I can do this crap one-handed. So watch the pot. Pretty clever, huh? So every time you click the thing, it would step at one turn. Now, are the gears different? No, they look about the same. This would be volume. Maybe this is why we didn't have any volume. God, why wouldn't they design this so you would override it? So these are relays. These are your resonant tuning slugs. Here are your frequencies of your remote control. So although this is cool, and hopefully we might attempt to get it to work at some point, depending on how much this TV grinds me into the ground, uh, I think it's, uh, in this day and age, since we don't have multiple channels uh, it, I just think that the headache that it would cause uh, for a non proficient user is, is more than it's worth to me this is a poor design that this can override the manual controls on the front of the set and if this fails you're stuck I think I found the best channel on TV At least it's in four by three.
this just looks trippy with the cataract. It's like a weird filter. Where Did You Go by Sad Puppy. Oh, it says no copyright. Free music wave. Copyright free music. See that? But why did the Google thing identify it then? Continuing on with part two and wrapping up part two of the Packard Bell Roundy repair because the CRT is currently out and getting ready for its cataract repair, which will be part three. Um, I'll do the recapping now. I bought two new caps. I got these from DigiKey. Um, the ones that are in there are 160 at 250, I think. And these are 220 at 250. And these are uh, made in China. These are Viché brand. And I went with these because they were the lowest ESR, therefore the highest current at um, 120 Hertz they were not the cheapest they do not go for the cheapest they usually go for the most expensive while looking at all the specs so here's what they look like and of course here's what the old one looks like a bit of a size difference there just a little bit so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna whack the wires out on the bottom and put these on the bottom yeah I'm gonna have to wrap some hook up wire around them and get them in there but we can do it and, and these are actually pretty heavy so you could tell these have got uh, enough paper and, and uh, oil or whatever in them and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these two resistors right here uh, 3.9 and 3.3 those are in the color demod circuit and they're pretty highly critical and so what I got was uh, 5% to watt okay see how I wrap that around that this is it's not soldered yet and see how mechanically good it is see the bottom the bottom one I cleaned out the solder there and I fed it through the hole binding it to the old capacitor. You could see where I cut the lug off the old capacitor out. I guess there really is no wrong way to do this except you know it not being mechanically well connected and sloppy maybe. Okay there are the two capacitors installed. They are in there you know, I use 150 watt iron to solder this one to the chassis uh, solid mechanical connection before solder. Um, negative is marked. So the negative is connected to the chassis on this one. The negative on this one is connected to the positive on this one. It's a doubler circuit.
Okay, Taiwan. When is that word going to get replaced by China? This one is 3.9. It's measuring 4.15. The new one is measuring 3.83. Okay, the 3.3 measures 3.61, which would be uh, still with... No, that would not be with an... Well, where's El Telefono? Let me play. I'm stupid modern American here. What is 5% of 3,300? 5% 5 of 3,300 is 165. So it's still outside of 5%. Okay, the new one measures 3.23. So it should be within it, and it's kind of equally low to the other one. Our two modern... 5% resistors are in. These are part of the color demodulation circuit. They're really the only two 5% resistors in the whole set. And in past on Packard Bells, I've found that if these drift too far, the color fidelity demodulation gets all screwed up. So uh, those are changed. Uh, our capacitors are changed. I think I had one other capacitor up here. I'll change that. But I think we can call part two a wrap. Here's my test capacitor. This can come out. Let's try and finish this thing up today. I uh, guess the first thing I could do, which doesn't require a whole lot of uh, deep thought or analysis, is change this IF tube that was bad. We had a uh, 6GM6 here. A good substitute 6JH6, so I got one of these new old stock. You know, the next thing I want to do is I want to bypass the uh, remote audio control. Um, it's causing constant problems, so. I'm going to just jump out the black to red wire on here. Okay, the uh, sound issue was bypassed down there, so the remote module can no longer kill the sound. But you can hear it's nice and loud now. Of course, channel 6 is gone. Uh, I'm going to do plate current. I was going to do cathode current, but I can't get this in there very easily. Okay, where did our sound go? So, I want to do high voltage regulation. You can see the high voltage is way too high. And, let me see, where's our service switch here? Service switch right here, right? So this should be down around 20 kilovolts, not 25. And I believe I had it turned all the way down. Let me see, where is it? Okay, so here's the high voltage adjust. That's the brightness limiter. So All the way down, I'm at 20. All the way up, I'm almost at 30. So we want to lock it down about right there. Now I got it in service, which would indicate a dim screen. Uh, I'm going to go to regular, which this is what it should do. It's regulating right now, right there. Like I said, you don't want high voltage run away. Because it will, not only does it produce a lot of x-rays, but it stresses the insulation on the flyback. I believe this is the efficiency coil right here. really need a cameraman for this crap. You know, you want to let it warm up before you adjust this. And you just want to sort of minimize the cathode or plate current. It just helps the tube last a little longer. So it was like right on. 
it was right on. So I think that's about it. Got my new capacitors. I got our ground wire back on here. I don't know why they put a ground wire on here, but I it broke off. I soldered it back on. This went a few degrees off as the silicone was drying, but the silicone's got it held on there. So I think we're about done here. The remote module is disconnected and bypassed. I'm trying to make this thing as simple and I don't want to use that phrase but yeah I want to kind of idiot proof it I want to eliminate any uh, any obvious thing that could possibly cause a problem in the future and that definitely could I'll leave this tube in here I want to come back and do sort of an overall setup on it and let it run for a, a bit I need to set that brightness limiter, which I guess you just turn the brightness all the way up on a bright scene and limit that down until it doesn't bloom. Uh, maybe try and adjust the focus, which is going to be a pain in the ass. Um, putting the final touches on the Packard Bell here, and I kind of just went over the convergence. And I'm going to crank the brightness limiter down a little bit I think which I need a screwdriver for okay so let's that's with the brightness all the way up I'm going to limit that down maybe to about there just so where it's not blooming. It's pretty good. I might... Come up just a tad on the high voltage, but that looks pretty good. Let's look at that beautiful deep green now that I got the uh, uh, what do you call it? Take the gray scales off a little bit. It's green, reds all the way up. Okay. Still a little on the green side, isn't it? You know, and, and this will change as you start using the TV this will the guns will kind of like break in and settle down from being left turned off for so long I'm gonna go to the other generator here of course this generator doesn't have kind of nearly the signal strength that the leader has but there's the more more, more complex color bar arrangement tell the phasing is a little bit different on this one you have to adjust the tint yeah it's there it's working mm. 
Nice. That should have been inside of a TV. Oh, oh, then we got the junk car. You know you're in flavor country. For more than a century, fans have known Cleveland's Major League Baseball team as the Indians. After this season, the team is retiring the Indians and becoming the Guardians. And together, we are all Cleveland Guardians. Decades of pressure from Native American groups and others, and last summer's social unrest over the killing of George Floyd oh, prompted yes. team officials to announce it is time to bench the Stupid. Indians. We are trying to be the most respected <laughs> we can, and it's not about us. No, 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 it's about no, no, no. other people. Actor Tom Hanks revealed the team's new name on Twitter Friday morning. You see, it has always been Cleveland. That's the best part of our name. And now it's time to unite as one family. Political correctness. To build the next era for this team in this ass. city. To keep watch and guard what makes this game the greatest. There's a lively debate on the name change, and sports fans are divided. Some say it's long overdue, others are crying foul. If people are feeling a certain way about a team's name that maybe doesn't represent them in a fair way, then I think that needs to be considered. We acknowledge the name change will be difficult for some of us, and the transition will take time. The Guardian's name was singled out among 1,200 fan pitches. Cleveland residents are already familiar with the it's Guardians. So there are two large statues near the ballpark that were put in place. Oh, to they'll take those the city. down. Anthony Pura, KCAL those 9 are News. Gone. From growing up in Pasadena to UCLA, now with the NFL's New York Giants. Darnay Holmes is an inspiration to many in Southland, of course, to the children as well. well tonight on Sports Central, how the 23 year old cornerback is giving back to children in his hometown. It definitely was important for me to make this free because uh, I grew up in a in a household where we didn't have many funds for real. So having a free camp and having a lot of professional guys come out and give these kids inside the wisdom is just something I always wanted to do. Using the gridiron to nurture young minds tonight on Sports Central, the part of his free youth camp that makes him happiest. That's at 1045 right here on KCAL 9. You know, that's significant because some of those camps can cost five, six hundred dollars. Sure. And he's doing oh, it for free. That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. We're talking about having a, a winning argument. Two teens making history by debating. Plus, itching to travel but dealing with frustration, the excruciating wait to get a passport next to date. They're here. You brought all these players in your Buick? Oh, yeah, my Buick. So you. Your Buick is Apple CarPlay. Where do I plug in? It's wireless. That's so you. What Your Buick is so hardcore. Careful, it's kind of busy. Oh, I got this with my superpowers. Ooh, and we'll look at my new Buick. Buick. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Current eligible non-GM lessees get this low mileage lease on this Encore GX Preferred Ford for around one ninety nine per month. Or pay no interest on 2021 Encore GX. It's all about models. selling junk so you can to the your public. Mortgage without Science supports these simple facts. There's only one true life cycle fact. Health is not a sprint. It's a marathon, Jen. And you know that. You got this. Nutrients for immune system support, heart health, and energy metabolism. It's but remember, to watch. you have more than regular energy. It's Jennifer Lopez energy. Or J-Lo energy. Seems forced. Jenny from the block energy. Overdone. Jenergy. Visit goalie.com today. Jenergy. 250000 for an Instagram photo. Live from the broadcast center in Los Angeles. This is KTEL 9 News at 8. Tonight, 8 o'clock, the man who was openly against the COVID-19 vaccine has died from coronavirus. The 34-year-old corona man tweeted about not getting vaccinated. Yeah, he even chronicled his hospital journey on social media. Tonight, Kate Kelly's Christine Lazar with his story. Mm. Stephen Harmon's last tweet was written Wednesday, just before he was intubated. It read in part, don't know when I will wake up. Please pray. Just six weeks earlier, the 34-year-old tweeted, I got 99 problems, but a vax ain't one. Oh, I, I can roll with that. How 
unbelievably demoralizing this is. Dr. Oren Friedman is on the front line treating COVID patients at Cedar sinai Medical Center. He says they've seen a tenfold increase in COVID admissions. Virtually every single person that is getting sick enough to be admitted to the hospital has not been vaccinated. On Instagram, Harmon posted photos of himself from his hospital bed. He wrote that he had pneumonia and was at risk of brain damage due to low oxygen levels. I can tell you that for the respiratory therapists and nurses and doctors that are having to go into rooms and take care of patients who are this sick at this stage, and to know that it's preventable if people simply had taken the vaccine, it is an awful feeling of PTSD and frustration. Harmon was a graduate of Hillsong College and attended Hillsong Church here in Los Angeles. In an Instagram post, Hillsong's founder, Brian Houston, called Harmon one of the most generous people. In a statement to us, Houston wrote, while many of our staff leadership and congregation have already received the COVID-19 vaccine, we recognize this is a personal decision for each individual to make with the Council of Medical Professionals. On Sunday, Harmon tweeted, if you don't have faith that God can heal me over your stupid ventilator, then keep out of my ICU room. There's no room in here for fear or lack of faith. He died three days later. I had one patient who looked at me um, right before we had to place the breathing tube down. And uh, he got very tearful and he shook his head and he said, oh, oh my God, I, I think I've made a really, really Terrible. So they didn't like Unlike his... at the start of the pandemic, Dr. Friedman says he is now seeing young and otherwise healthy people being admitted with COVID. He says the only breakthrough cases he's seeing are in those who were already immune compromised. Christine Lazar, so Nine News. They didn't like his politics, so they put him on a ventilator and, and snuffed him out, I guess. California's former attorney general visited that, the that clinic tells you right there not to be outspoken about your politics, so I guess I need to shut up. Farmers say any outbreak among agricultural workers could be catastrophic because they are essential to getting produce to the marketplace. But Sarah says the clinic has made a difference since the height of the pandemic. About 40% of farm workers yeah, It's here too damn bright where it should be COVID. dark. Today, it's about 8%, and that's because they're getting vaccinated. Well, the Grower Shipper Association says tonight the clinic has administered more than 40,000 vaccines. You are now, you are now watching the Rideshare driver is in Channel 9, 9, 9 o'clock hour of propaganda. The revealed your old Andy Van Pham fell asleep behind the wheel. While working as a Lyft driver, he hit a pole and his passenger was killed. A fan was arrested this week for vehicular manslaughter. He has since been booked into the Orange County Jail. A Bakersfield mother is in jail after she left her two young children inside of her van Ooh. on a hot day. Baked. She was in the grocery store. Baked. One of the children was able to unlock the door and get out. A woman found him crying when the mother was located. Well, she got angry Baked. at her son. She hit that little boy. She's pulled him by the hair, shook him really bad. Which Ooh, is shake and bake. And then, like I mentioned, the little boy had no shirt. She was hitting that little boy, striking that little boy with a open hand. Slapping it's kind of like you, you beat the meat before you bake We're it. told the mother took off before police arrived, but they did track her down at a local motel. She was arrested on felony child cruelty charges. Baked. Her children are now in protective custody. Baked. Some long